and the clock strikes midnight. It is midnight. <laughs> Can you hear it? My husband has clocks. He likes the, the old vintage clocks and they all chime. So it's midnight here. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for being here. Um, big money bolos. So I'm going to share with you 14 of my big money bolos items that I bought low and sold high. Uh, everything is $40 or more. Um, I do also have a bread and butter series where I share items that are like $30 or less. So those items are a little bit easier to find. And a lot of people really like those. So if you have not checked out my bread and butter series, my bread and butter bolo video series, I have a playlist. Go check that out. But these are my big money ones. And I only have 14 tonight. So let's get started. All right. The first one is from my uh, jewelry bulk buy purchase. Um, yeah. So if you guys haven't seen it, it's my Monday night series. Go check that out. I'm, I bought a ton of jewelry, but this was one of the items in it. And it was actually 344 pounds of jewelry. So this is one item. And I sold this for $45 best offer. And the buyer paid shipping. So this is, I think it's pronounced lawn jeans or lawn jines. I don't know. I always say it wrong. But it's a 10 carat rolled gold plate mechanical wind up women's watch. And the lady messaged me and she was just so excited about this watch. So I was happy to sell it to her. So very exciting. And if you guys want to hear or see what I paid for the 344 pounds of jewelry, I have a video on that where I weigh it all and I tell you what I paid for it. And how, like, I bought it off of eBay. Like, how do you buy 344 pounds of jewelry on eBay? Well, there's a story behind it. And I tell that story in that video. So go check it out. All right. The next item is this vintage Broadway carousel jacket. The, the sleeves are leather. I picked this up at an estate sale. And it even says Charlie on the front, you guys. But that could probably, it's stitched in there. It could be, um, what do you, like, a stitch remover. I don't know what that's called but you could probably use one of those and take it off. But I sold this for a hundred bucks and I picked it up at an estate sale for like $5. So pretty, pretty good bolo. It did take some time to sell, but I am glad that I waited on the right buyer. And again, it sold for a hundred dollars. So pretty cool. All right. This is the second time I've sold this antique 14 K gold filled ornately carved cigar band ring. And I have a gal in my Facebook group that has helped me like with identifying certain things and she called this a cigar band. So she gave me that keyword to use in the title. I think that it really, really helped and I really appreciate that, you know, she's been so kind and helpful to me. So um, I sold this for $45. Again, the first time it got re returned because they said it more, it was more um, plateware than they had expected. And you can see, I mean, I show close ups. The, these were the same pictures. You can see it's bent. It's not in great shape. It's very, very old, but it got returned, which is fine. They returned it very quickly in the same condition that I shipped it. So I was completely fine with that. Um, and I sold it again for $45 and the buyer paid shipping. These vintage walk lively Steffi and Barbie doll, and they have like the real eyelashes. Um, you can see them, but Somebody messaged me and they're like, will you take $75? And I'm like, yes. So I changed the price and then my sale kicked in and somebody snagged it for $67.50. So I was hoping to get $75 out of them, but $67.50 is just fine. You can see they've got some damage on their legs. Um, they are not in mint condition, but they do, their eyelashes look pretty good and their face makeup looks pretty good. And $67.50 plus shipping is great. I cannot remember what I paid exactly. It was a bulk buy purchase. So I probably have five bucks or less in these. I picked these up at an estate sale for $5. I almost did not buy them because they are a size five and size five is so hard to sell, but they sold and they sold pretty quick. I paid five bucks at an estate sale and I took a best offer of $68 plus shipping they are brand new in the original box, which is very, very cool. So they're like a weighted exercise sandal. Pretty cool, huh? Dr. Scholl's. 
All right. For like five bucks, it's shaped like a fish. It's a figural scabbard, scabbard carving set, sheath forged steel knife fork India wooden fish. And if you can't tell, these were not my words. I looked this up on eBay and I used words from other people's titles because I don't know what half those things mean. But anyhow, um, yeah, pretty cool, huh? It's like a carving set. Kind of weird. But uh, I sold this for $40 plus shipping. It did take a while to sell, but I paid five bucks and I was happy to see it go. Here's another uh, perfume from that bulk buy that I picked up at the thrift store. Um, it's called Lolita Lempica and it's a uh, 50 ml made in France and it's partially used. And I don't know. It's hard to see really now that I'm looking at it. Okay. You can kind of tell there. I mean, it's still got a lot left, but I took a best offer of $40 for this. I had about, I think it was 36 cents in the perfumes by the time I divided it out by the number that I paid for it and what they sold or and how many items there were. So about 36 cents. So very good return on my money for those. I sold another Berkham bunny. I did take an offer of 98 on this one. Um, it is iridized. It is more rare. I probably could have held out and waited for about for 125. But you guys, I had, uh, I forget, what did it equal out to like 30 some cents each for these also? was a bulk buy. Maybe it was 27 cents each, maybe. I don't know. It was something ridiculous. Uh, I did really well with these, but I did not think that they were going to be worth money. I just thought they were kind of cute and different and, you know, bunnies and, but I had no idea. I mean, I was thinking maybe I could get 20, 30 bucks for them. And then I looked them up and the story behind them is fantastic. These are in my um, thrift battle on Primetime Treasure Hunters channel. If you want to hear more about them, go check that out. But I took a $98 offer on this and the buyer paid shipping. Picked this up at my thrift store. It was $10. It was half off day. So I got this for five bucks. I do believe. I do believe that's what it was. It was either five or seven. It was it might have been um, fifth. No, I think it was 10 and half off. I have a video on that haul. So if you guys want to know for sure what I paid for it, it's in that haul video. Um, but this came from a thrift store. I am guessing five to seven dollars and I sold it for $40 and the buyer paid shipping. Okay, so these live dolls, they have wigs and you can change them out. And these are little wig stands. I love this one with the hat, like it's connected to the hair and the headband. And then the hair comes off. These are wigs. Let me see if I have a picture. Did I not do a picture? Oh, there they are. No hair. And then you change their wigs out. So it's kind of cool. So I got this lot and this lot. And they're all different. And sorry, they're naked. I didn't have any clothes. Um, but I sold both lots to the same person. And I ended up selling both lots for $75.24 and the buyer paid shipping. I don't remember what I paid for these. I'm guessing I have less than $5 in all of them. This vintage Car Cartapesta Angel Tree Topper, it's like a paper mache. Picked this up at a thrift store for a dollar. I sold it for $44 plus shipping. I have done really well with these angels. This one has a repair, so it's got a screw in the back. Um, I'm guessing maybe the wings fell off. I don't know, but it still sold really well and really fast. This vintage sorry board game. I picked this up at a garage sale. I think it was 50 cents and I sold it for $50 plus shipping. It is still sealed. So definitely a winner. The next item. Oh, and if you guys have not seen my vintage board games to be on the lookout for, definitely go check that out. All right. I have a sad, sad story about this. It did not make it. And, you know, I, I just, it's frustrating because I had this thing packaged really, really well. And the person messaged me and they're like, I love this. I'm going to put it outside. They sent me a picture of where they were going to sit it. And I was really excited for them because, you know, it's exciting to get something you really love. And I felt like they really wanted this item. I got a message today that the item broke. So I'm assuming that it's like the leg like down here, like one of these legs. No, it is broke, like down, like 
right here in between. Let me see if I get right in here. Let me see. Like right in here, it's like cracked. Like it just must have got like thrown or like somebody sat on it or something. I don't know what happened, but I was so disappointed. And I'm like, uh, USPS, the last time I filed a claim for a mug, I'm going to come talk to you guys and tell you this story real quick. The last time I filed a claim for a mug, they sent me a letter saying that I had to bring the mug, the packaging materials, and the box that I shipped it in because they needed proof that I shipped it well before they were going to refund my money. And I'm like, how on earth am I supposed to bring it to you when I've already shipped it to the person? So, um, long story short, I didn't get my money back and I had it, it was insured, you know? So very, very frustrating. And I, I don't know why this happened. Has this happened to anyone else? Am I going to have to deal with this every single time I file a claim? So do I have the person, do I pay for them to ship it back to me so I can take it to my post office and, and show them the packaging? Like that's a whole nother, I'm, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. Number two, the buyer doesn't want to file the claim. I mean, then that's another step for them when they already received an item that was broken. And I will tell you that the mug I shipped was wrapped in so much bubble wrap. It was in a loose, like not a loose box, but um, it had like some give. So it wasn't like it maybe got hit on the side. I have no idea how it got broken. I just know that it must have really been thrown around. Um, these are the two packages that have broken this year. The mug that I'm telling you about which was about, I don't know, probably four or five months ago now. Um, but I never did get my money. So that's really frustrating. Um, I am going to talk to my postmaster about it and just kind of see what to do. Maybe I shouldn't be filing the claims online. And I do have one more really good bolo for you guys after this story. Maybe I should just go into my post office and actually physically like fill out a claim and show them the pictures that they send me on eBay. I don't know if that would be better. How are you guys doing it? Help me out. Um, I don't have this happen a lot, so I'm not really sure what to do. But yeah, they sent me a letter saying I needed to bring it in. And of course, I couldn't bring it in. So back to this thing. The gal messages me back later after she opened a return, and I told her it already had these cracks. Those were disclosed. Um, but it was literally split in half, like I said. So she's like, opens the case. And I said, you know, I'm sorry. I told you that I have to go and talk to my postmaster. There's nothing I can do until I, uh, until I talk to the postmaster. Cause I don't, I don't know what to do because of the mug thing. So she opens a claim, says she wants to return it. Well, I get a notification later today that says, I would like to just keep the item and try to have it repaired. Would you mind refunding me $35? And I was like, absolutely. I'll return $35. Then I don't have to deal with the post office. I don't have to deal with a claim. Hopefully she can repair this and use it because I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's got a lot of detail. So you may not see it once it's glued back together. I don't know. I hope she can salvage it. So she asked for a $35 refund. So I sent her the $35 refund. I paid $5 for this. I took a best offer of 50 I gave her 35 back. So I still made a little bit of money, like five bucks or something. And you know what? I feel awful. I feel awful that she was so excited about it and that it came broken. And it's just sad, it just stinks. Which leads me to this beauty. All right. So I was hoping I was going to get a bidding war on this one, but I'm very happy with the sold price. I sold this for $199.99. The buyer paid immediately. She's like, I don't want to say life size, but she's pretty big. She's a, a big, um, cause her legs are folded. See, it's so cute. I mean, she is like one of the prettiest dolls I've ever seen. I was at a thrift. I was at the Goodwill actually. And I look up on the shelf and she's staring at me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so buying you. And she was $12 and 99 cents, you know, plus tax. And I listed her and I had a bid very, very fast. For $199.99 plus shipping, she is going to, I believe, Canada. So she will go to Global Shipping first, which she did send me a message. And she's like, please, please, please package her. I'm like, look, 
I spent 30 or 40 minutes like packaging this doll. I like bubble wrapped each arm. I, I said, um, when I was out with the clothes, you guys saw my closet with all the clothes. If you didn't go watch that video, it's crazy. But I had emptied all the bags out. So I took those bags and I wrapped those around the bubble wrap. So it's another like inch or two of like plastic. I bubble wrapped her head. I mean, this girl is bubble wrapped. So my concern is it's going to um, the Global Shipping Center in Kentucky. Do they take it out of the package before they ship it or do they just ship it? Because I really hope they don't take it out of the package and mess with it because I spent, like I said, 30 to 40 minutes just getting it packaged because I don't, she's beautiful. I don't want her to get broken. I mean, as a buyer, I mean, you don't, you don't want to get something that's broken. So I really, really, I hope she makes it. I'm going to insure it, but I don't know if that'll do any good after my story with that coffee mug, but I think she's going to be okay. Um, and I think global shipping, um, like it, if it makes it to them, fine. I think if it gets broken in transit from global shipping to Canada, I'm pretty sure that they cover it. I think that's how it works. I don't know. I haven't had that problem. I did have a global shipping thing the other day that got stuck at the global shipping center and it never shipped and eBay covered it. So, um, or global shipping, whoever, uh, because it never left their center and went to the actual buyer. They just closed out the case and I'm sure if they end up finding it, it will ship to the um, original person that bought it. I don't think it'll come back to me. So some little extra details, shipping details in this video. Sorry about that. I hope it didn't drive you too crazy, but I didn't have a whole lot of bolos anyway this time, only 14. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Comment below with your favorite bolo in this video. I'm trying to think, mine's that doll. That doll is beautiful. All right, you guys, have a great night. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you real soon. Oh, be sure to like, hit that thumb, comment, subscribe, and share.